I've heard the story told of dreaming Joseph and of Jonah and the whale you often see. And there are many, many others through the Bible. I should like to meet them all, I do declare. And by and by the Lord will surely let us meet them at that by the house that my, had been my uncle's. He passed away, and there were three of them. And two of them belonged to my, great uncle, or my great-grandfather. One of them belonged to my grandfather. When my dad come home, I said, look here. Look what I got. It's your daddy's wallet. He grabbed that thing, and it was special to him. He looked all through it. He touched it. He looked at it. He felt of it. It meant something to him. I know that we're ready to go see our loved ones who've gone on before. My dad's ready to see his dad, his mom. I'm ready to see him. But most of all, can you imagine? We're going to look on the face of Jesus, the one who saved us. Amen. My soul said yes unto the Lord. My soul said yes unto the Lord. For he's a great king. He's doing great things. My soul said yes, yes, yes unto the Lord. My soul said yes unto the Lord. My soul said yes unto the Lord. For he's a great king. He's doing great things. My soul said yes, yes, yes unto the Lord. Well, I went to the Lord, repented of my sin. I went down in the water and the Holy Ghost came in. He brought me out of darkness into his marvelous light. He set my feet on straight street and now I'm doing right. He gave me a song the angels cannot sing. Oh, glory, hallelujah, I have been reading. For he's a great king, he's doing great things. My soul said yes, yes, yes unto the Lord. My soul said yes. 
you glad you said yes to Jesus? Amen. Ushers, would you come? As they're coming, I want to announce a building fund offering last Sunday night. We took it up, and it was $4,000. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. Put us down around, or somewhere around the $5,000 mark, and so uh, we're glad for that 45, somewhere in there. If I say something, my wife's going to say no, and so uh, but anyway, we're, we're 4,000 less than what we was. And so we thank the Lord for that. Will you bow your head? This offering goes to pay the bills here at Faith Worship Center. God, we thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight, God, and to worship you, to give to your work. We just ask what you've already promised, and that is that you'd bless the gift and the giver. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Lord, send the rain and pour out your spirit and let the fire fall. Heal us one and all, fall fresh on me. Oh, and Lord, send the rain and pour out your spirit and let the fire fall. Heal us one and all. Oh, pressure on me. Lord, we 
Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You can be seated tonight. We want to formally welcome you to our Sunday night service. It's so good to have each and every one of you here. And we say God bless you for coming and being faithful to the house of the Lord. We had a great service this morning. We had people uh, that gave their heart to Jesus and people filled and refilled in the Spirit. And that's why, why we do what we do. Amen. And so we're so glad of that. Let me make these announcements. August the 13th, 14th, and 15th, which will be this coming up weekend, we'll be in revival with Brother Lauren Larson. Friday night at 7 o'clock, Saturday morning, he will be doing a teaching at 10 a.m. and then Saturday evening at 7 o'clock, and then again one more service on Sunday morning, and then we will be dismissing that Sunday night service. And so please keep that in mind, that's this coming weekend. Please be praying about those meetings. August the 27th, which will uh, is going to be a ladies' dinner and ha- a devotional at 6.30, asking all ladies to bring sandwiches or salads. Ladies, I encourage you to come out if you can. It's going to be a great time of food and fellowship. And it's also a good opportunity to invite one of your friends that don't normally go to church because they might come to something like this and uh, be an opportunity to make a connection when they won't uh, come to service. And so I encourage you, take advantage of every opportunity you can uh, to reach the lost. And so uh, continue to, uh, to be about the work of the Lord. Uh, we, we also want to announce, be praying for our schools. We got kids be going to school here in a couple of weeks. They, they're excited. They're fired up. They're happy. They're quiet. But we will be praying for our children and also praying uh, for our teachers, and so keep that in mind. I already announced a building fund offering. In regards to that, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for those that are giving on this Sunday night building fund offering. Uh, we have went, uh, since the beginning of the year, we went from $55,000 down to right out around the $5,000 mark, and we thank the Lord for that. We need to get this knocked out so that we can move on to the next thing that the Lord has put in our spirit, put in our heart, and uh, God's just doing great things, amen? And we're so very, very thankful for that. And so again, God bless you. Thank you for doing all that you do for Faith Worship Center, amen? Amen. Sister Jennifer Harden. Would you come tonight? Appreciate Miss Jennifer and uh, her, her stand for the Lord, and uh, she's going to be giving you our word of encouragement this evening. I told him not to expect too much. And 
I'll talk faster than Jake, so it won't take long. <laughs> um, I just wanted to uh, share a couple verses. Um, turn with me to Joshua 2, um, verses 12 and 13. Now, therefore, I pray you, swear unto me by the Lord, since I have showed you kindness, that you will also show kindness unto my father's house and give me a true token, and that you will save alive my father and my mother and my brethren and my sisters and all that they have and deliver our lives from death. I love this story, and this uh, is talking about Rahab here. She didn't just believe for herself. She believed for her whole family. Um, where would our families be if we didn't witness to them? Her family surely probably would have been lost if she hadn't believed for them. We get tired of seeing the devil have a ball with our families. Our kids have been under attack. Our finances have been under attack. Our marriages have been under attack. But you know, we should expect opposition. Right, that's right. We're raising up an army for the Lord. That's right, amen. There will be opposition. But do not be discouraged. God is faithful. Amen. And God still wins. Right. Keep believing. And while I'm believing for souls, I'm just going to go ahead and believe for the miserably saved and for each and every one of my family members to know the message of the cross. Amen. I want them to know that the true peace yes. of Christ. Amen. Sorry, I should not have ever wrote this down. I should have just winged it. <laughs> uh, for the, I want to be believing for the oppression and depression to be lifted from our families and for a double portion of God's spirit to be poured out on my children. Amen. They're going to need it. That's right. They're going to need it when they go into the schools. Right. We're going to need it when we go into our jobs. Right. Sorry. So keep asking for God to move the unmovable. Keep asking him to break the unbreakable. I'm expecting some big things for my family. And I hope you are too. Amen. 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 Don't give up on your family. Amen. Praise the Lord. That was a great encouragement.
say that for it's not I'm in your favor I'm giving it all to you for I knew not what to do I'm so glad you let me see oh that you're really all that I need he said the battle's not mine I give it to you Lord it's thine now little David he stood so tall and Goliath seemed so small sweet victory had reigned for little David he says he gave the battle to one with the record of getting things done he said the battle's not mine I give it to you, Lord, it's thine. Well, the battle's not mine, said little David. For it's thine, I'm in your favor. I'm giving it all to you, for I knew not what to do. I'm so glad you let me see all that you're really all that I need. The battle's not mine, I give it to you, Lord, it's thine. Well, the battle's not mine, said little David, for it's thine, I'm in your favor. I'm giving it all to you, for I knew not what to do. I'm so glad you let me see. Oh, that you're really all that I need. He said, the battle's not mine. I give it to you. Lord, it's thine. Little David, oh, so small. And Goliath, though so tall. The odds were just too high for little David. He shook off all his load With the power of God he was clothed He said the battle's not mine I give it to you Lord, it's thine Well, the battle's not mine Said little David For it's thine I'm in your favor I'm giving it all to you For I knew not what to do glad you let me see oh that you're really all that i need he said the battle's not mine i give it to you lord it's thine little david looks so small and goliath though so tall the odds were just too high for little david took off all his load for with the power of God he was clothed he said the battle's not mine I give it to you Lord it's thine well the battle's not mine said little David for it's thine I'm in your favor I'm giving it all to you for I knew not what to do Amen. Amen. I love that verse. He says, I shook off all of my load. With the power of God, he stood bold. Amen. Praise the Lord. Would you stand with me one more time tonight? We still believe that God is able to heal. He's able to deliver. He's able to meet and supply each and every need. And tonight, we're going to take an opportunity. If you've got a need in your life, we want you to come. And we're going to join together with you and believe the Lord to touch you and to meet that need tonight. Would you sing, please, something this evening? Amen. Amen. If you've got a need, we want you to come. Amen.
Church family, would you come and join behind your family this morning? Sing it one more time and worship. Why don't you just close your eyes and sing it as a prayer? Come on, sing it, Emily. Hallelujah. Lord, we want you to rain down tonight. Let the power of the Holy Spirit move, God. Hallelujah. Lord, rain down. 
Hallelujah. My comforter, my comforter and my friend. Lord, we worship you tonight. We need you. Once again. Come on, sing it, congregation. Spirit, rain down. Hallelujah. Rain down. Hallelujah. Let your power fall. Let your voice be heard. Hallelujah. Come and change our hearts as we stand on your word. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That should be our heart's desire for the Holy Spirit to rain down upon us. Amen. You can be seated tonight. Thank you, singers and musicians, for your help this evening. And again, we just welcome you uh, in this service tonight. We thank you so much for coming out and being faithful to the house of the Lord. I do want to say that it's good to have Brother Galen Russell in service with us tonight. He's he came by, and we appreciate pastors of Assembly of God in Pocahontas, Arkansas. We know where Pocahontas is at, and uh, it's good to have him tonight. We honor you, Pastor, and thank you so much for coming this evening and being with us. Pastor Brian, would you come? Praise the Lord. Good to be in the house of the Lord, isn't it? Amen. 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 Appreciate the Lord tonight. I, I tell you, I enjoyed the service this morning. And uh, just a great, great time in the Lord. And, I, you know, it's just always something when you get to bask in the presence of the Lord and see God do some big things, some great things. And a lot of needs in the church. And I say that because it is a, uh, the work of the, of the body is to pray one for another. Well, I may not know their need. Well, that's right. You don't know and you probably don't need to know. But guess what? We all got needs. And it's our job as, as being a part of this body to pray one for another. Amen. And uh, so I encourage you to keep lifting up your, uh, your church family uh, in your prayer. I, I'll tell you, you, if you're here long enough, you can kind of look around. You know, we all kind of got little certain places that we like to sit. And, that, you know, if somebody used to sit here, they sit over here, you know, you, you notice something's out of place, something ain't right. And, and uh, so... So you notice that, but I, I, I tell you, during your week of praying, you can start with in your mind walking the aisles, and you'll, you'll come up to somebody that sets a, a certain place, and you'll notice uh, where, who they are, and you'll notice uh, that, that, hey, you need to pray for them. And it's a good time to just to pray one for your another, your brothers and sisters in the Lord. And, and uh, so, hey, if you don't got nothing else to pray for, pray for me. Amen. Amen. As one guy said, I need the prayers, you need to practice. So, hey, we like it. But, hey, I want to say also before I get into the word, I appreciate that word of encouragement, Sister Jennifer. She won't mind me saying this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Even if she does mind, I'm going to still want to say it. But anyway, she, I remember when me and my wife was up helping at the Oak Ridge Church there some for some time, and this family started coming in. And I remember the first time they were there, didn't really, I knew of them, knew them. But that was about it. We had a special time of prayer and give people, as we did just a moment ago, to have people to come. If they had a special need, they want to come up. And I seen her, she come up there and she said, I just want to pray for my family. She's still saying that same prayer. And there's more of them today in church than what there was then. That's right. And I appreciate that. I appreciate those that, that continue to hold to the fire and to continue to fight the fight of faith, believe in the Lord for their family. And appreciate that word of encouragement. I want you to open your Bibles tonight to the book of Romans chapter number 7. And we're going to look into the word tonight. And I um, announced this morning, be preaching along this line. All right, Romans chapter 7, 
verses number 21 down to verse number 23. We're going to cut right in the middle of this chapter. A very misunderstood chapter in the Bible, but we're going to look at it tonight. And the Bible would say, For I delight, no, I find then a law, verse number 21, I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But, but, I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. I want to talk to you tonight a subject, simple subject, simple type, nothing new. The war. The war. I said this morning that if you're here, if you're in the flesh and you're a Christian, you know what it's like to have a war between the flesh and the spirit. But it's all about fighting that fight. It's all about how you conduct yourself in the fight, fighting this fight, this war that goes on between the flesh and the spirit. Let's look at it tonight. Bow your heads and your hearts at this time. Father, again, we love you. And we thank you, God, for your presence. We thank you, God, for your wonderful, wonderful word. God, I pray tonight that, Lord, through my inability, oh God, and my lack of maybe education or whatever, I pray that you would help me to relay this is which, that which is you have put up in my heart, God, that it would go forth. God, that your word would have free course and be glorified in every heart of every individual, that this word not only would bring about a challenge, but that challenge would bring about a change, Lord. And God, for we know that we're nothing without you, God, and we need you tonight. Let your spirit fill our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Romans chapter 7, again, as I said a moment ago, is probably one of the most misinterpreted scriptures in the Bible. And I would probably, one of the, I don't know all of the reasons, but one of the reasons that I find personally in my study of the Bible is a lot of scholars believe that the Apostle Paul, as he wrote chapter 7, was he was writing it from the point of view of an unsaved individual. That I do disagree with. First of all, uh, when you begin to study uh, the chapter 7, you understand its context, and it has to be studied along with chapter 6 and chapter 8 to really understand the context of chapter number 7. But first of all, to put it in a lump shell, something that I noticed this afternoon, that an unsaved person don't have a war. There's no war between the flesh and the spirit. Paul is talking about a war here. He's talking about the war, the pull between the flesh and the spirit. We just read the verses. So therefore, that tells me that Paul was an individual that is saved, that loved God, that was trying with all his ability to live for God in a manner that pleased him. But yet he found himself failing because the how is something that he could not find. Oh, we're busy. The church is good at telling people that Jesus can change your life, but they leave out the three-letter word of how. That's right. That's good. Oh, we can quote Scripture front to back, but we still can't tell the how. Unless you come to Faith Worship Center, you're going to hear the how. That's right. You're going to know the how. You won't go here very, come here very long, and you're going to hear the how. None of this right here is nothing new. It's not gonna. It's not gonna whiplash nobody and catch you off guard. It's something that you're already familiar with, and it's something that we have must continue to familiar ourselves with. But we have to know the how, and we understand. You can look back in chapter number five of of, of Romans. Uh, Paul would bring out the the uh, the condemnation uh, that the sin nature brings upon an individual. And he comes out in verse number 6 and he tells us of how strong the domination of the sin nature is. And then in Romans chapter 7 he comes in and tells us how the desperation really kicks in of how desperate we are. See, we're condemned. 
we're condemned. And then we understand that sin dominates our life. And then when we finally realize that and we're trying to live for God, it will bring you to a place that you are desperate for anything, for any help of some, just something. i got to have some relief because I'm tired of fighting and losing. That's right. Amen. Amen. So we went from condemnation to domination and we're, we're at the point of desperation. Romans chapter 7 again as Paul. Paul would, uh, this is not the writing of a, of a person that is unsaved. Paul is being an honest individual with you right here in this chapter as he tells you what will happen if you don't understand Romans chapter 6 that tells you that you and I, the moment that you uh, we said yes to Jesus, we were baptized into the person of Christ, which is the only union, not water, not spirit, but, it's the, but the person of Christ being baptized into what He did for us upon the cross of Calvary. And his death, burial, and resurrection. Why is that so important? Because that is the only union that breaks the power of the sin nature and gives you a divine nature is what Peter calls it, which is now you have a desire to do things that are pleasing to God. But that's not enough. If you don't know how to walk in that every day, the sin nature is not going to keep his mouth shut. That's right. He's like a yapping beagle. He will not keep his mouth shut. He's going to keep on, keep on doing what he does, rearing his ugly head, doing everything that he can to mess you up. But see, in Romans chapter 6, Paul tells us how the union with Christ breaks the power of the sin nature, gives us a divine nature, and because of that, we have a brand new power source, we have a change in masters, and because of that, we can now, we have the ability and the power to yield our members to things of righteousness, not unrighteousness no more. But here's the problem, or here's the, here, here's, the, here's the key to it all. In order for this to take place, what I just said, in order for you to yield your members to that of righteousness instead of unrighteousness and keep the sin nature where he's supposed to be at bay, handcuffed, mouth shut, do, not, not doing anything, then in order to keep him right there where he's supposed to be, your faith, Listen to me. Your faith must remain in the person and the work of Christ in order for the Holy Spirit, which is the divine nature, to get up in your business and to do what only He can do. Now, I'm not talking about the spirit baptism. I'm talking about victory over sin. The spirit baptism is not for that. Only the baptism in the person of Christ breaks the power of the sin nature. Spirit baptism, as he preached this morning, done a wonderful job, is power to be a witness, power for service. Amen. Amen. Romans chapter 6 has nothing to do, it has everything to do with victory over sin, but nothing to do with the baptism with the Holy Spirit. That's right. That's right. Now, Romans 7. Paul gives you, he reads his personal mail. He gives you a personal testimony of what will happen to you the moment that your faith moves from the person of Christ and you put your faith in something else, whether it be your, your works, your ability. You see, we get so caught up in ourselves, we love it because we, we get to feeling so good thinking God's going to give us a check mark because we read five chapters to the two today. Or I'm having a problem with something, so I'm going to do my best to read it out. I'm going to pray it out. I'm going to fast it out. I'm going to, I've even heard, heard preachers, preachers, not, not just 
Preachers say this. I'm going to give it out. I've got a lot of problems right now. I'm going to, I'm going to give in the offering plate until the Lord get, takes care of it. No, you can't, you can't earn nothing from God. See, the problem is your faith is in what you're doing rather than what Christ already did. And Paul says, here's what's going to happen. That which I would do is, or for that which I do, I allow not. For what I would do is that do I not. But what I hate is exactly what I wind up doing. Now, how did that happen? It happened because he's not hooked up to the power source of the only power source to give him the victory over the problems that he's dealing with. That's right. Because his faith is moved. His faith has moved. His faith is not in Christ and the cross, which gives the Holy Spirit the latitude to work on his behalf. So therefore, with this, and you know what? All of these things that are good, all of these things are right. You should read, you should pray, be faithful. You ought to give, you ought to fast, you ought to do all of that. That is all wonderful things, and that's the fine line right there. We, there there's nothing bad in doing that, but your faith cannot remain in that. Right. Your faith must remain in the cross right. at all times. Now, Romans 7, again, as Paul would say, uh, he said, I, "I commend the man for actually for doing uh, for for being so honest with with his readers and being honest and just sharing what happens because you know what we've all been there, we've all been there." He would go on, verses number twenty one through twenty three, actually mentions three different laws here that I want you to take note of to listen to me just for a moment. First of all, we have the law of sin and death, talking about the sin nature. We have the law of God. And we also, these verses bring out and talk about the law of the mind. The law of the mind, we know this, the law of desire and willpower. Paul, again, as you go back and you study verse number 7, and even you can look at Verse number 9, he would say, For I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived, and I died. What, did, what happened? What happened? He seen the opportunity to do something for God, or he had a problem with something, he needed some help as an area in his life. He seen that he ought to do something, or, or a commandment came, or the desire to do something right. But the ability was not there, so he was looking for within his own self to find the ability to do that which God was pleased with. But he relied upon himself. Because he tried to obey through the law of the mind rather than the law of God. Now let me explain that a minute. Of these three laws, the law of God is the most powerful. Now you need to understand that the law of sin and death, which is the sin nature that is working on the inside of us, is more powerful, it's stronger than the law of the mind. You see, the law of the mind, simply put, is, uh, is willpower. It's the desires. Willpower is not how power. Look at verse number 18, if you would. I didn't tell you to bring it up. If you can, that's fine. Look verse number 18 of this chapter. This chapter says, For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For the will is present with me. I have a desire to do right. I got the desire. It's all there. But, with, but, but how to perform that which is good, I don't find that. Because willpower is not how power. Right. If willpower is enough, we'd not ever have another need for another drug rehab. No alcohol anonymous, narcotic, nothing like that. We have a need for that. You go to the Galpay house and every one of them in there, they wouldn't be there if they had enough willpower. I don't mean that disrespectful, but that's just the truth. That's just the truth. But willpower is not health power. So when we want to do right, but our faith is not in the cross, here's what happens. The law of sin and death begins to override the law of the mind. 
Are you with me tonight? The law of sin and death, the sin nature overpowers the law of the mind, which is the desire and the will to do right. Okay. Now, so, if the law of God, this is where we got to be at tonight. If the law of God is more powerful than any of these other two laws, then as a believer, we got to figure out how to activate it. I just told you a moment ago, I'm going to keep saying it because, uh, well, I just going to, I hope I do repeat myself on that because it's something I want you to understand. We got to understand how to activate the law of God. Verse number 22, Paul would bring out and he would say, For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. Now, the inward man is a divine nature. What's he saying there? He delights in the law of God after the inward man. Well, as I said a moment ago, the moment that you and I say yes to Jesus, the Holy Spirit comes in, breaks the power of the sin nature, locks up the sin factory, keeps him at bay, gives you a divine nature on the inside, which is the, 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 the power of the, of the Holy Spirit as he moves in, gives us a new spirit. He starts cleaning house. He starts cleaning house, but it's the divine nature, the desire to do things that are now pleasing to God. That are now pleasing to God. Now, when, when, when this happened, when the divine nature comes in, he comes in and he brings God's moral code with him. God's law. He brings God's law with him. It is now within us because he writes his law on the fleshly tables of our heart. He writes it on the fleshly tables of our heart. So now we, 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 we have a better understanding of what's right and what's wrong, of what we should do when it comes to live for God, because this is where the rubber meets the road, because the Holy Spirit, the divine nature, when He moves in, He's the one that's going to tell you, hey, you don't need to watch that on TV no more. Hey, you don't need to hang out with, with that crowd no more. Hey, you don't need to talk like that no more. Hey, you don't need to dress like that no more. Hey, you don't need to be going over here no more. You don't got to have a preacher tell you that. That's what the divine nature does. But when I start obeying what God does, and when I start doing all of this, and I start relying upon the arm of the flesh, thinking that, well, God's going to be so pleased with my performance. I'm going to be so holy because I'm going to do so much. Then we have a problem. We have a problem. Verse number 23, he brings out, he says, But I see another law in my members warring, against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Okay? Now, verse number 23, have the law of sin and death. See, sin starts in the heart. And then it is carried out in the physical members. In the physical members. You see, the flesh is a neutral entity. Our flesh is the neutral entity. It does whatever it's told to do. It does whoever is ruling in the most. Like that old story everybody's all heard for years of the, of the Indian chief that had the two dogs that, that would fight, and which one would win? Well, the one I feed the most. The one that I feed the most. But the, the flesh, just, it's just a neutral entity. He does exactly what he is told. And it, it, is, uh, uh, it is important that we understand in order for our fleshly members and the, uh, to, to, to do things that are, pleasing, that are pleasing to God, they must be ruled and reigned by the divine nature, being led by the Spirit of God. And He can only do that, He will only do that with our faith in the cross of Christ. He can't work outside that. He never has. You look at the Old Testament. He never has. He never has. Some things I want you to understand about fighting the fight of faith because this is a war. And it's not always just we have things in the flesh that fight with us and it doesn't even mean that the sin nature is back in business. Because the flesh... The sin nature can be shut down 
not producing sin anymore, but there's still things in our life that has to be changed. Because the Holy Spirit, Spirit, see, he's still working on me. He, he's got some things he got to clean up. You've all seen my illustration of the, of the swimming pool with a septic line in it. The gate shut off, but nobody wants to swim in it. It's not got no more sewer being produced in it, but nobody wants to swim in it. But there's a whole lot of gnashing that's got to be cleaned up on the inside. So if we want the Holy Spirit to do that, our faith must remain in the cross. He can't work outside that. But it's a war. It's a war. Because, see, the problem is the flesh contains the remains of the fall. It's things that we like. It's things that pulls at us. It's things that pulls at us. You know, and it's something, we, we, we say this and we, we bring it out sometimes in the, um, in the foundation class that, you know, the devil's a fisherman. He's a fisherman. He knows exactly what bait you like. He knows exactly what bait you like. Maybe I have a problem with alcohol. He's not going to bait the hook with nicotine. Maybe alcohol's not a problem for you. Maybe it's a internet site, a TV show. He's not going to use the same bait for me as he is for you. Now let me say this while I'm on that. If Brother Troy has a problem with one thing and I don't have a problem with that, but I have a problem with this and he don't have a problem with that, that don't give him an excuse to do what I have a problem with. Is that good? Is that all right? That don't give him an excuse. If it's wrong for you, it's wrong for me. People say, well, I don't, I don't have a problem with that, so I, I can do that. That's not a problem for me. No. That's not, what, that's not the teaching of the Bible. But if he is, the devil knows what to, he knows what to put on the hook to reel you in. That's the war right there. Because my goodness, we want it. Oh, we want it. We want it. When that war starts raging, the only fight that we are to fight is the fight of faith. That I keep my faith plugged into the only place that the power of the Holy Spirit is the one that's going to do the fighting for me. Because I already know within myself, I don't have the ability to do that. I don't have the, the, the power to perform that which God wants me to do. I don't, I don't got it. I don't got it. I'm going to fail. I'm going to fail. But again, we're all in this war together. We're all in this war together. Something else that you and I need to remember in fighting this war. As believers, we are in this world, but we're not of this world. Sometimes a little bit of separation has to come into play. It has to come into play. We got to separate ourselves. Now, let me give you an illustration. Wayne, I got to pick on you, buddy. Come help me. I love this boy. I get to see him about more than any other kids during the week, so. Come right here. I do. I love this boy. He's a good boy. Let's just say we're just pretending, okay? Me and Lane's drinking buddies. That's what we do on Fridays and Saturdays. That's just, that's just we've done it for years. That's just what we do. That's our thing. But somebody at Faith Worship Center invites me to church. So I think I'll go. Sitting back there on the back on the seat with the white knuckles, I ain't got no idea of getting saved, but the Holy Spirit is knocking on my heart. 
and I give my heart and life to the Lord, and things begin to change. I don't have a desire to run around with Lane no more. I love him. He's like a brother to me, my best friend ever. I don't have a desire to drink anymore. I don't want to isolate myself from him. But I can't live that lifestyle no more. You see, when you get saved, old things passed away and all things are becoming new. Not only did when, what happened when I got saved is I hate my former lifestyle. I don't like it no more. I don't have a desire to do that no more. So the best thing I can do, stay right there, I'll just separate myself. But I'm worried about his soul, though. I'm worried about his soul. So if I'm worried about his soul, do I go hang out with him one more weekend thinking I'm going to be that witness for him? No, because the devil's going to slip me right on in. He's going to slip me right on back in. I'm worried about his soul. The best thing I can do is say, Lane, I, I, can't, I can't do that no more. I love you, man. But God's, ch- God's saved me. God's changed my life. I, 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 don't, I don't hang out with that no more. And besides that, man, I want you to know I love you and I'm praying for you. That's right. Here's what happened. Brother Jeff done this a long time ago. I got to do it again. Kids, I want you to watch what is fixing to happen. I want you to watch what's fixing to happen, especially if you're fixing to go back to school. And you got that crowd that you don't need to hang out with. Oh, but you're a Christian and you want to be a witness to them. You're going to hang out a little bit. I might get a chance to tell somebody about Jesus. And I'm going to hang out a little bit. And I'm going to listen to a few jokes. And I'm going to find me a a chance to slip in, uh, a a chance to invite somebody to church. Here's what's going to happen, Lane. Give me a hand. You see, you're trying to pull them up. I can't pull Lane up. What's going to happen? Pull me. That's what's going to happen. So the best thing that you got to do is separate. Here's something else about separating. You have no idea. You have no idea that the Lord ain't knocking on that heart. And guess what? The moment you separate, give the Holy Spirit boom. He can't stand it no more. And guess what? You don't ever know. He might be the next one to follow you in the next Sunday. There's a war. There's a war. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. They'll pull you down. They'll pull you down. I'm not going to go sit on a bar stool and witness them old buddies. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. That's not, that, that's, that's not, not a smart decision at all. <laughs> but I want you to understand that you're going to fight the fight of faith. You're going to make yourself available to the Spirit that so He can work. Yes. We don't earn nothing by God, to, to God by how much we read, how much we study, how much we spend time with the Lord. But it's something that every Christian or desire to do. You need to find yourself in the Word. That way God can lead you. Let this Word, this Word, it truly is a lamp unto your feet, a light unto your fat. Let, let it lead you. Let it guide you. The steps of a good man and woman are ordered by God. That's right. right there. To activate the law of God, we must get to... I t- I didn't, we didn't read it. Let's get to verse number 24. Here's the key to fighting this war right here. Oh, wretched man that I am. You want to activate the law of God, which is stronger than the law of sin and death, stronger than the law of the mind. you got to get to the person of Jesus Christ. He's the only one that can deliver you. That's why it is so important that you and I keep our faith anchored in the cross of Christ if you want the power of the Holy Spirit to work on your behalf. So this, I give you three steps in fighting the war, in fighting and winning this war of between the flesh and the devil. 
Step number one, keep your faith in Christ and the cross so the Holy Spirit can work on your behalf. Step number two, keep your faith in Christ and the cross. That way the Holy Spirit can work on your behalf. Step number three, keep your faith in Christ and the cross so the Holy Spirit can work on your behalf. Need I go any farther? That's it. That's it. Write all three of them down. That's, a, that's it. That's the key. Amen. That's the key because here's the thing. If you try to do it any other way, you're going to be an old wretched man. That's right. You're going to fall flat on your face. Right. Paul said, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? They used to have a way of torturing people. It was a death sentence for them people. You done wrong, they would take you and tie your body to a dead corpse. Until the bacteria and the rigor mortis begin to set in and move over to your body and slowly take you to the point of death. A miserable, miserable condition. You know what I felt like that before? I felt miserable before, trying to fight this fight of faith, not knowing the how, not understanding that all what, what Jesus did for me on the cross was enough. Oh, I, I understood the cross, but I, I wanted to leave it there. I was ready to move on to something else. I, I knew that he died for my sins. I was ready to leave it there and move on to something else. But guess what? I found out later on that there's nothing else to move to. There's nothing else to move to. And it's all I needed. I don't need anything else. I don't need anything else. We must activate the law of God in doing that by keeping our faith in the person and the work of God. I come to tell you tonight to keep fighting. I come to tell you tonight to keep fighting. Keep fighting the fight of faith. Keep fighting the fight of faith. I know it's tough. I know we got needs right now in the church. And yes, yes, I, I, hey, the devil's running rampant but, rampant, but look at it this way. It is something because the, the reason he's doing it is because we're seeing some great things. Right. We're putting the devil on the move. I know this. But you must walk in the Spirit. Let's look at Galatians chapter uh, number 5 before we go any farther, before I quit tonight. Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 and 17. Paul would say this. This I say, walk in the Spirit. You shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit lusts uh, against the flesh. These are contrary the one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would. Now, what's he saying here? If you walk in the Spirit, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Does it say that you won't have lust of the flesh? No, sir, no, ma'am. You're going to have them. That's right. Truth is, you don't have them today. But Paul is saying if you walk in the Spirit... When them desires come, you won't fulfill them. That's right. When them desires come, you won't fulfill them. Now again, walking in the Spirit, how do I do that? My faith in the cross. It ain't my worship CD. My favorite song. Starting my day off like that. It's not that. I'm not downplaying that. That's good. You need to do that. But that ain't walking in the Spirit just because I... Listen to my music on the way to work that I like, that lifts me up. No, walking in the Spirit means I plug myself up to the only power source that's able to give me the ability to be what God wants me to be. The only one. The only one. I say to you, keep fighting. I say to you, keep fighting. We're in this to win. We're in this to finish. We're in this to finish. I'm reminded of a story. I quit with this. Brother Jeff, would you come? Back in the Civil War, some Union soldiers were holding up a, a camp that had a million and something rations in it, supplies, foods, ammunition that they needed, desperately needed for the war. The problem was they were greatly outnumbered with the Confederate Army. 
And they were exhausted. Just about to give up. Of fighting the war. When somebody happened to look with some binoculars. Almost 20 miles away. To a mountain on the other side. And back then they didn't have radios. Didn't have cell phones. They'd have had a code that they would do with a flag. And there was a man up there giving his code with his flag. Another man in the fort. He was sitting there and he was he was interpreting that, kind of like a Morse code, he was interpreting that flag. And that message was this, when they were about to quit, that message was this, hold the fort, for I am coming. General Sherman was on his way. And he come with reinforcement to help them out. But it gave them another ounce of, of, of fight in them. It, it, it put some fight into the men to keep on fighting until General Sherman come. And I've come to tell you, hold the fort. I see the flag from heaven waving right now. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Hold the fort. Fight the fight. Fight the fight. Hold the fort. I ask you tonight, have you lost your fight? Have you lost your fight? A lot of... So many times we want to throw in the towel and quit. Don't lose your fight. Don't lose your fight. Keep fighting the fight of faith. Keep fighting the fight of faith. Would you stand to your feet tonight? Would you bow your heads? Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for your word. So grateful, God for your presence that we feel. God, this is a message that it leaves no one out. It leaves no one out, God. We all fight. God, we all have struggles. God, you're the anchor that holds, though. Jesus is the anchor that holds. God, for that one, Lord, that's discouraged, that one that is down, that one that Lord that seems like it's the best time to quit I ask you God to lift them up Lord I ask you God to refresh and refill them Lord that they would have another ounce of, uh, of strength to fight another day God to fight another hour does it matter God we know that Lord that this battle it's not ours it's not ours oh God You've already won the battle. Victory is guaranteed to each and every one who put their faith in the cross at all times. God, we live by faith. And I ask you, God, to lift every one of us up. Touch us, Lord. Let this word saturate our hearts. Encourage us all, God, to keep walking, to keep fighting. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to open the altars up, find you a place to pray. Just find you, it's just between you and God. God knows what you fight with. You know what you fight with. We're all in the war together. Let's just find us a place to pray. Pray one for another, whatever you feel. Before we go out the week, we're going out to the battlefield. Going out to the battlefield. The devil's out to steal, kill, and destroy Rest assured, he will not give up. He's not going to stop fighting. He won't stop fighting. Come on, would you fight the fight of faith with us? Would you fight the fight of faith with us? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. Worship you, oh, and you are here, working in this place. I worship you, I worship you, oh, and you are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. Worship you, oh, and you are here working in this place. I worship you, oh, I 
worship you. Oh, and you are the way maker, miracle worker, promise keep light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Oh, and you are the way maker, miracle worker, promise keep light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. For you are here, healing every heart. I worship. And you're turning lives around. I worship you. Lord, I worship you. Oh, and you are here. And you're mending every heart. I worship you. Oh, I worship you. And you are the way me. Miracle worker, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, and you are the way make miracle work, a promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, and you are the way make Miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, and you are the way make miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here. Touching every heart, I worship you. I worship you. Well, let's worship tonight. And you are worship you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Healing every heart, I worship you. I worship you. Oh, and you are here. And you're turning lives around. I worship you. Lord, I worship you. Oh, and you are here. And you're mending every heart. I worship you. Come on, worship church. Lord, I worship Come on, worship him. Worship yeah. you. Oh, and you are the Miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Lord, you are the way make miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, and you are the way make Miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Thank you, Lord. And you are the way make miracle work, the promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. 
Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. Come on, work. You never stop. Yeah. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. And even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. No, you never stop. Come on. You never stop. You are the way make miracle work. Promise keep light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Oh, and you are the way make miracle work. Light keep light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. 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 Praise the Lord. My, why don't you give Jesus a hand clap of praise tonight? Amen. You know, a lot of things you could, different things you could preach on. As someone that said one time, you know, uh, not every message for everybody. If you're going to preach on marriage and looking for a husband or a wife, if you're not in that field, not looking, not, don't want to look, that message is not for you. Amen. This one's for everybody. Right. We're all fighting the war. Fight the fight of faith, church. Amen. Hope that you have just a great, great week. We do want to see you back here Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. We're going to break back off into our Bible study, our Bible classes. Looking forward to that. And uh, so adults, uh, teens, uh, children's church and primary class, something for all ages. You, uh, you, you know that, so it's available for you. And uh, so come and be a part of the Wednesday uh, midweek Bible study service. Keep your family, your church family in your prayers. And uh, we hope that you just have just a great week. And uh, may God bless each and every one. Of Anything else, Pastor? Nothing else. All right, remember the announcements. Right, we're going to pray. We're going to be uh, dismissed from this service. BJ, would you be so kind?